even business class ticket, there are subgroups. You have a B, full business, and discounted business. So if the protocol officer is training these things, then they can use the in-house uh, fair basis to also compare with what your suppliers will have. Because we, what the committee and parliament wants is the value for money. If your suppliers will have the best value for a particular route and for a particular class of ticket, why not? If the protocol officer is able to, because everybody is competing for the same airline seats. If the protocol officer is able to procure the seats early, also depending on when the travel time came, need have a, one particular officer in charge and not the chief accountant. Uh, Chairman, thank you. Then let me come from this. Chairman, yes, the protocol officer is the one in charge, assisted by the chief accountant. So we have a data of uh, protocol uh, at the ministry, so she's the one in charge of the ticketing, assisted by the chief accountant. Mr. Chairman, let me say that we have two chief accountants. So the chief accountant is not head of the account. So she's only assisting head of the account, who is also the chief accountant. As a point on. Why? Your ministry has two chief accountants. So which of them is in charge? We have head of accounts and then assistant head of accounts. Okay. Our chief accountants. <laughs> By grade, they will be chief accountant, but the head of the accounts. Is One different. of them is senior. Okay. Okay. Honorable Mutala. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I, in response given by the minister on the matter of the hikes in the prices of ticketing, and as captured in uh, paragraph 170, an instance where a ticket which costs 6,279, uh, sorry, Ghana cities, KLM, could take 32,000. 32,000 Ghana cities, 313, and that amounts to about 328%. It is absolutely ridiculous, Honorable Minister, to say the least. Even if it is a first class, first class flight, it will not cause that. And the, example, the reason you gave for such hikes, that when a player is injured and you need to airlift such a player, that is understandable. Could you tell this committee, the whole of the period for which these findings have identified. How many players were engaged in such that you needed to leave them out of this country? And for which reason such an outrageous amount of money was paid for ticketing? Thank you so much, Chairman. Chairman, the Honorable Member didn't get me clear. I didn't say the injured players to leave them out. That's not what I said. But what I said is that when you have a team at training camp and sometimes one of the players is injured, you need to replace. And because the time will be too short, maybe if it's just two days to a tournament or two days to a, 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 a match, you need to fly the player that is coming to the place. And when you are buying a ticket just to a day before, it is high. And we all know that. Know. That is the industry, the airline industry practice. So it's not outrageous as you, are, you, you, you may see it. It might be outrageous on the paper, but in reality, if you are buying a ticket to fly tomorrow on a BA, and somebody book a ticket three months ago on a BA, you will not be flying on the same fare. Honorable, I do point. understand that it won't be on the same fare, but I'm looking at 6,000 to 32,000. A percentage of 32,000.